Okay, we have a very, very special guest all the way from Mount Shasta, California. And we have Dr. Shan Hong Lu, Dr. Lu, who is going to give us a little bit of uh, uh, background uh, about herself. What did she do in the past and what is she doing right now in the present to help people? in these uh, interesting times. Dr. Lu, thank you so much for being here in our wellness hub by Monica Campana. And uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Monica. Uh, Monica is definitely a walk of amazing health. Look at her, she is a walking example. I'll do anything she's doing. <laughs> so um, I want to share with people, I, um, I'm a medical doctor. I actually was trained in China, and then I got my PhD in human physiology here in the United States. I also have a background in genetic research. So um, all, with all these credentials, I become a internist and dealing with people that are sick in ICU, aging in the nursing home, and also I have my own practice. So my walk into the holistic realm was really triggered by my autoimmune disease 14 years ago. I sustained the head injury. I started having allergies, asthma, insomnia, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, and all these things could not be helped by Western medicine. Western medicine gave you a pill or drug to manage the symptoms. So I was only 42 and I was taking eight prescription pharmaceuticals. Eight. Addressing eight. eight. Yes, wow. addressing my digestive issues, acid reflux, allergies, asthma, insomnia. And of course these drugs, you know, do work. But the problem is no one feel great, right? Monica, this is the problem. They yeah. are- You are putting patches, are you are putting patches on, on the problem. You're not solving the problem. That's-, that's Right, exactly. Happens. It's like you have a wound that's infected and you, you just put a Band-Aid on the wound and the wound will continue to get infected. The problem with that is it caused your systemic illness. When you address one symptom at a time, you're going to start have a systemic Ill illness. And it's like in, in Mount Shasta, we talk about avalanche, you know? It's like one little snowball, one little symptom, and suddenly the whole mountain comes down. And that's what we're seeing today is the pandemic of chronic diseases. Monica, we're not just talking about pandemic of COVID, we're talking about the pandemic of obesity, autoimmune disease, and cancer, and cardiovascular disease, right? It's taking over our entire country and very quickly the world. So my passion after I heal myself is to help people identify what is the root cause of their, of their illnesses, instead of just treating the symptoms. So um, now my service is actually donation-based. I don't charge people money. People can call me for 30 minutes. We're gonna look into what has caused the very initial event and what has made the healing difficult, right? So people say, Dr. Lu, I have Parkinson for 10 years and I was managing it and suddenly, I'm not managing it anymore. I'm falling apart, right? I'm in wheelchair, I'm just falling apart. So we always go back to 10 years ago, what happened 10 years ago, you know, trying to find the root cause and get rid of the root cause. So when you get rid of the root cause, the disease, your body will start healing. People don't understand that. They, they just add more things, but the body know how to heal. So um, that's why I really love the nutrition, the hormone balance, the stress reduction, and those are all important pieces in helping your body to heal. But at the same time, Monica, if you are living organic life, but you live next to a agriculture farm, they're spraying all the pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, even though we're living really healthy in our house, you know, our environment is being poisoned. So that's another passion I have is to help people by making connections of their illness to their environment, maybe we can help the environment. Mm -hmm. Because nobody 
really care about the environment until they can see they are sick, their children are sick because the environment is polluted. Yes. So that's my work now. Wow. So you basically, um, you can, you can tell you, you do tests, right? You do tests of uh, any type of food to make sure that they uh, don't contain any type of, uh, uh, now you do it yourself or you have like a, you have some type of a, a system. I work, I work with um, four different labs. One of them is in Europe. Mm-hmm. They actually, uh, you can, uh, just order your tests online yourself. It's called detox project.org and then they give you a little envelope you 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 mail in your hair okay no and way they look at, um, about 40, yeah they, they look at 40 different um chemicals wow uh-huh. that's interesting i've like never heard of it wow color or something it's wonderful <laughs> wow i think um, we put it did i put it did i put it on the post i think i put it on the post what is the name of the it's called the, the detox website? project I know I don't have it. I have to add it. Okay. The detox. What is it? The detoxproject.org? Project.org, right. Oh, the detoxproject.org. Yes. And they mail to every country. They mail to Brazil and uh, Switzerland and Italy. Isn't that cool? Wow. Uh-huh. So when people call me and say, Dr. Lu, I have my data now. What I should do? Um, if they're clean, we'll just give them very good congratulations because that means they are, they're living a better life than most of us. Um, so it's really important to find out. Oh, wow. And now have you had, do you have some type of a database? Have you done uh, many of these mm-hmm. uh, or received results from, from tests from all over the world right now? How are yes. numbers? Yes, I'm a numbers we have person. two women. Yeah, so um, in the past four years, since 2016, I attended an environmental health symposium. It's called the EH, EHS. They have a symposium every year. Last year, they had a virtual because they can't really gather. Um, but in that conference, many lab came. So we start measuring people with cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, Parkinson's disease, autoimmune, uh, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. We start measuring their urine level. To my surprise, uh, Monica, even people have from Florida, from New York, you know, from different places, the number one chemical we found is glyphosate. Glyphosate is the main ingredient in Roundup. Roundup is an herbicide that people use in their garden, maintaining their beautiful lawn, uh, the school, the park, they keep the wheat down, right? Um, not to mention the farming. They grow all the GMO food, all the conventional food have Roundup laced. Not only they grow them, they also use it for harvesting. So we were talking about people eating bread. Some people can't eat bread, not because the bread itself, is really because the bread are laced with glyphosate hmm. to harvest. During the harvest time, they dry the leaves so the, the wheat are, easy, are easier to be harvested, you see? So a lot of the vegans actually, if they're eating conventional legumes are tested very high in glyphosate because I'm a vegan for the past five years. You know, I eat only organic, but a lot of people don't know. So they go to the store and they buy a loaf of bread and the loaf of bread will say non-GMO, you know, natural. But bread is not the GMO anyway. But the bread can be still sprayed with Roundup for harvesting. You see? So it's really, really significant um, finding that I was shocked. So what what type of bread should you eat? You should always do organic. (laughs) Organic bread. Organic bread. The best is the stone grind. Uh, That's the old... Uh, you know, grinding methodology that does not deplete the nutrients. Um, so stone brine, gr- grind organic bread is definitely a must. Hmm. Now, unless you have gluten sensitivity, you know, then you can't do yeah, bread. Then you can, well. you have to stay away from it <laughs> completely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, wow. This is so interesting. And so, and so mainly what, what are you saying to, well, we, we knew that organic food is always better uh, than uh, non-organic food. Um, 
but uh, I didn't know about this uh, specific uh, specific uh, sprays. Wow, that's yes. uh, that's really scary. So um, you know, watch out. And um, what else? What else can you give us? What other advice can you give uh, um, people uh, right now, especially during these crazy times that they need to they need to increase their you know maybe immune support or um, yes. and strengthen their body from the inside out. Yes. So the second toxin we found out um, that people are really high is called the BPA. This phenol A uh, is basically originally developed for hormone replacement, you know, like woman goes through menopause mm -hmm. because it's an estrogen mimic. Uh, it's a pharmaceutical estrogen. But the problem with BPA is when the pharmacology uh, is looking at BPA, it causes too much problem like gallbladder issues, breast cancer, you know, a lots of problem um, in, the, in the reproductive system. So they said, okay, we can't do this as a pharmaceutical drug because the side effect. So the food packaging industry discovered BPA. This is where BPA is being used in the hard plastics to make it really hard. Mm. Uh, it's in medical equipment, it's in um, can lining, you know, the, the canned food lines with BPA and also BPA are, have been used in the receipt um, of the airplane ticket. It's very slippery. Hmm. Sometimes you go to a store, you know, the, the, the receipts from the grocery, those are covered with BPA. Hmm. BPA have been found also very high in fish. Okay. Um, because BPA is a plastic. It's, it like to concentrate in the fish of the, the fatty fish. So a lot of people eating fish oil, they don't even know they may be exposed to a lot of PCBs, BC, uh, BPA, phthalates, which is the, uh, a lot of the fire retardant, the plastics, those things are leached into the animal fat. Mm. This is the hardest thing to do right now because a lot of people are on the, on the ketogenic diet that consume a lot of animal fat and they don't understand yeah, the fat doesn't make you feel hungry, so people lose weight. But what's in the fat is very, very concerning. So my most difficult patient, actually, Monica, is people, they have been on ketogenic. They lost the Which one is problem. ketogenic? Which one is ketogenic? What, what? Ketogenic is people eat all fat and some protein and almost no carb, zero carb, okay? So a, a classic meal it's 70% of fat, right? So they have, you can have avocado, then you have butter, then you have cream. Salmon. And then you have salmon. salmon. Yes. So you don't have a lots of fiber, hmm. see? And people feel pretty good because they're not hungry all the time. So I have, I have to admit there's some benefit, right? To, for people to lose initially that weight to avoid processed food. But in the long term, the body is so acidic, they cannot detoxify very well. And also the microbiome eats the fiber. You know, they need the polysaccharides. So microbiomes are messed up. My classic cases are people, they have trouble pooping. They only poop once every week. Wow. Uh, they have to have enema. <laughs> I just talked to a you, the British lady. You know, she has me on ketogenic forever. Um, because she said she can't tolerate vegetables. So she eats so much animal fat, but she could not poop. Now that's a really big problem. People don't understand. Having a good bowel movement one to two times a day is essential for your brain health hmm. because most of the toxins are reabsorbed in the gut into your brain. Hmm. And that's where people can think straight, their hair falls out. Another thing that's really devastating is when the body is chronically acidic, the bone have to move the calcium out into the blood to keep the blood not so acidic, right? That's called a buffer. Our bone is the biggest buffer for the blood. So what happened with these people is they develop a silent killer, which is the osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. So a lot of people, even the big people, you know, they have been on keto forever. We do a bone density scan. Guess what we found? The bone is so horrible. There's no more calcium left. 
So um, I love to support people that are promoting whole food, plant-based diet, organic, because overall you are detoxing better and please eat organic food because it doesn't make sense if you are giving up on meat, dairy, and egg, but you're not eating organic food. I think it's really important because I am seeing some vegans have high level of glyphosate and BPA because those things are still in our body. Wonderful. Well, Dr. Lu, Good? this is not, yes, this is not going to be the last time that we will have you here because you have so much to give and, and, uh, and uh, to help people out there who, who need advice. And so hopefully they will contact you to get more information and maybe check what they're, what they're eating, double check. And if there are some, uh, some products that they're not sure about, they can ask you to, to find out more. Yes. So yes, I, I thank you so much for, for coming and uh, helping us. Um, thank you everyone for being here. And until next time, mwah, ciao everyone. <laughs> thank you, Monica, for everything. <laughs>